You are watching Sammy, the interviewing toucan, made possible by the Indiana Young Readers Center. Hey, everybody. I'm Sammy, and I'm so excited to be here today with Joyce Brinkman. Hi, Joyce. How are you? Hi, Sammy. It's so good to see you again. You know where you were on my podcast one time, and, and now I'm back on your That's program. right. This is great. Absolutely. It's so nice to talk to you again. So we're having you on today because you were a poet laureate of the state of Indiana. I was, yes. Wow. So can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and your connection to Indiana? Well, actually, Sammy, I'm a fifth generation Hoosier, but I wasn't actually born in Indiana. Uh, my my father was down in southern Indiana, uh, Floyd County. He was born in, born in New Albany. That's right there by the Ohio River. And he fell in love with a little girl in Louisville, you know, and married that young lady uh, who then later became my mother. So uh, I, I basically grew up in Louisville, but then I got back to my I got back to my Indiana roots, my Hoosier roots by going to Hanover College oh. and came to Indianapolis. So I've been here for a long time and my roots go way back in southern Indiana. I love hearing about, you know, multi-generational Hoosiers. That's amazing. How great. So, Joyce, I said earlier that you were the Poet Laureate of Indiana. When were you the Poet Laureate? Well, I was the Poet Laureate from 2002 to 2008. And basically, I got named Poet Laureate by the Indiana General Assembly. And from time to time, they would decide that they were going to name somebody Poet Laureate. There was no rhyme or reason to it, no nothing to tell the Poet Laureate what they might do or what <laughs> why they were, you know, what how they might help, I guess. Uh, and uh, and it would and it, it would be long periods of time where there would be, you know, not somebody new named. So after I got named by the General Assembly, I thought we need to put this down in statute so we have some kind of system. And I particularly wanted it to be a system that would help with education because poetry is so helpful in an education setting. And I wanted to have the Poet Laureate to have some responsibilities for educating, not just in the schools, but also in, in community centers, uh, uh, in retirement centers, uh, various places in the state to bring to bring poetry uh, to our to our citizens. And, and look, I Joyce, you're you're educating people today. Well, yes, and you are still doing it. You educate people all the time, Sammy. I know you do. It's wonderful. <laughs> what was it like to be the poet laureate? What was your favorite part? Oh gosh, there was just so much good stuff about it, really. I was, I did a lot in the Indiana State Parks. Um, I write a lot of moon poetry. A lot of poetry gets inspired by moons, you know, that I see. And so uh, I did uh, poetry readings at night uh, in the Indiana State Parks, um, mostly reading my, my moon poems. And that was always a really fun thing. And it was wonderful how I, it, it just amazed me how people would sit out there uh, on the grass, in the woods, wherever, and, and listen to me uh, read poem on a beautiful moonlight night. Uh, it was it was a wonderful, really fun kind of experience. But there were lots of good experiences. I also got to host one of the biannual state poet laureate uh, uh, gatherings, which brought poets from other states around the country to the state of Indiana. Uh, and also we brought a poet from Mexico and a poet from Japan. So it was wonderful to have these people from other states come and visit our Hoosier state and share with the public and also the international poets that came. And then also one of the really neat things that we did was our, our Indiana poets went out and did workshops 
with young people all about sports because our we decided we'd play on on you know what do we do a lot of in Indiana we do a lot of sports activities so we we worked with actually uh, swimmers at the uh, at the at the uh, blind school uh, and to to write poetry and also uh, like uh, bicycle uh, kids that were in bicycle programs kids that were in in basketball programs baseball programs with the Indianapolis Indians we did lots of workshops with young people all over the state and then they got to come together with us, some of them got to come together with us when the the laureates were visiting here and they got to record their poems that they had written with the laureates down at the uh, uh, NCAA headquarters in downtown Indianapolis. So that was a wonderful thing to be able to work with the kids and, and let them record with people who were, were published and were uh, you know, laureates in their own states. So, so it, there were just a lot of neat things that we got to do when I was poet laureate. Oh my goodness. It sounds like there was a lot of community building that happened. And like you said, lots of outreach with kids. I just love all of that. Yeah, we, we had a great time. And one of the things that happened is, you know, sometimes the people on the East Coast and the West Coast don't necessarily know about all the great things that happen here in Indiana. Well, and, too bad for them. Yeah. And so when they came here and they got to visit our state parks and, and you know, and they went around our state and saw all the things that were happening, they were they were really impressed with the fact that Indiana is a very poetic state. I think that's 100% true. Now, Joyce, you talked a lot about doing poetry with children. Why do you think it's a good idea to do poetry with children, to have them read it and write it and experience it? It's really good because poetry is very much an educational tool. Poetry can be used to help people be entertained and educated at the same time when they listen to poetry. And then in particularly for kids, the thing that it does is when they write poetry themselves in particular, it helps them learn about themselves. When they put some of their ideas and thoughts and, and comment on what they're seeing in the world down on paper, it helps them understand themselves better. At the same time, it's helping them understand the world better because whatever they're focusing on in their poem, you know, they're, they're usually learning a little bit more about it. They're experiencing it either actually, or maybe even from a research standpoint, they want to write about something and they want to find out about something. So they do some research and, and, and then they, they take that research and they write a poem and it just helps them again, better understand themselves and, and the world around them. Wow. It just sounds like there's so many different ways that you could use poetry with children. Thanks so much for sharing those things with us, Joyce. Now, I'm so excited to ask you to read a poem that you've written. Do you have something there ready? I do have. And you can see my little uh, woolly worm. I guess he's this way. <laughs> my little woolly worm. He looks so tasty. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you will, you will understand why he's up there. Uh, <laughs> definitely, you will, Sammy, when I read this poem. This poem is called Wiggle Wiggle. Oh, and, and, he, and he's not a he's he's a woolly worm, not a wiggle worm, but he wiggles a lot. Uh, awesome. And if if, uh, if I had the video of him up here, you would see him. You would see him wiggling up and down this uh, this fence area here that is in in this picture behind me. Mm. This poem is called Wiggle Wiggle. Wiggle 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 worm into the smallest hole you squirm. If you were big like Frankenstein, you would be no friend of mine. Wiggle, wiggle, slender snake, passing through the garden rake. You are green and you are gold. You shed your skin as you grow old. Wiggle, wiggle, little mouse, slide into the chicken house. There you'll find the chicken's corn. From there, you'll wiggle to the barn. Wiggle, wiggle, funny fish. If a fisher gets his wish, you will be his meal today. Better hope he flies away. 
wiggle, wiggle, busy bug. Wrap yourself up in the rug. You can have a peaceful sleep until the vacuum starts to sweep. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle worm. Don't you know a fire can burn? You must stay away from fires and never touch electric wires. Wiggle, wiggle in the sheets after having bedtime treats. Wiggle, wiggle into dreams after all these wiggling scenes. Oh, I love that, Joyce. <laughs> Thank you, Sammy. <laughs> that's how I clap for you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Oh, oh, yes, that's wonderful. So fun. <laughs> well, Joyce, this has been so much fun. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's just been a delight. Sammy, it's good to see you again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, everyone, this has been Sammy, the interviewing toucan, reminding you to read local. So long. Bye, Joyce. Bye-bye.